Esther. I'm Nick. And we are today celebrating five years of having lived off the grid on our piece of land here in the woods. Kind of a trip to think that five years ago we just showed up here and lived in a very fancy tent. It was a fancy tent. We showed up in a two-wheel drive truck with a yurt in the back and uh, started making our way. And um, it's kind of hard to think about uh, that we lived in that yurt for so long. Now that we're in the house and we kind of forgot about all that, it was three years in the yurt. Mm -hmm. And it's just a year and a half now or so in the house. Yeah. So we wanted to come and say hello today, partly because it's been five years that we've been on this journey and it's a good day to, to sort of check in and see um, what that story is. But also we've been really missing from YouTube of late. I have heard before that as you get further into your life, time speeds up and things go faster and faster. I have just never felt that like I've felt it this spring. To some extent, it's because we've been doing a lot, but also even when we're not doing a lot, it just feels like the world is on fast motion. Our middle child just turned nine. Stella turned nine over the weekend. Um, she has a best friend now. And she's like a, she's about to be grown up any minute, I guess. She's a person. She's a person. <laughs> Milo grew an actual inch in a month, something like that. It yeah. Was a, um, we have a measuring board where we measure their heights, and um, and Sadie's going to college next year. So yeah, she's ready. <laughs> she's moving out. <laughs> it feels like it. We've just felt like life has been such a blur, and of course that's also true of our homestead and our homestead projects. We have a lot to tell you, and we do want to take this opportunity to give you some detail about some of the things that we've been doing. But even just sitting down here to begin, it does feel like a lot. I've been busily working with my shovel arm. Now I can imagine that someone might look at this and say, well, that's a ditch. But I promise you, upon closer examination, you would realize it's a very fancy ditch and therefore it must be a swale. We used erosion cloth uh, on this steep hillside. We were losing topsoil during the, uh, during the spring melt. The idea is that it holds topsoil long enough for some roots to get established and then the roots are what hold together the hillside. I have six garden areas this year. My spring garden and then the patchwork garden or the main garden um, and then the little house garden but then the other three are my kids gardens. It does. So we got to pick a place to start. Let's start with construction. Oh. Let's start with you. Oh, that's my department. Yeah, that's you. Okay. Um, so where are we? We've, um, well, I guess we wrapped up the mud room and we haven't really shown a whole lot about the very final stages of that. Um, not that it's finished because I don't really finish anything. We just... Not until he's dead. Right. So, <laughs> so I can't finish it or that means the end for me. Um, but we got it to the place where um, we think it's going to work and we kind of usually let things kind of sit there for a while and make sure that they're really functioning the way that we want them to um, before we put all of the energy into making every little detail nice. But it's the only room in the house that has window trim on it. So that's pretty finished, right? Yeah. Uh, the shop. The shop's the other thing we're building. Uh, so I've gotten through all of the milling for the timber frame portion of the shop. Um, it was uh, it was a lot. He works really long hours and steadily through the month of April. He also traveled some, but between traveling to do work to make money, he was on that mill pretty constantly, and some of it was kind of hairy. The milling is not my favorite anyway. We don't use any heavy machinery here. And so he's turning these giant logs with hand tools. Yep. Um, and it's not my favorite because I, I do worry about his safety. And mine when I'm helping. <laughs> there was one point, honestly, when I was helping this time, when I lost, I lost the, um, the turn that I was trying to make. 
and I ended up on the ground. And the log was not moving, but I was on the ground, and I was not happy about it. Yeah, I mean, sometimes when you put your full force into something, um, you're able to um, uh, knock yourself on your butt, too. Um, <laughs> Maybe so, that's just what I didn't like. Maybe it was just my ego, right, not my safety. Right, that you were on the ground. <laughs> yes. um, yeah, these logs were uh, a larger <clears throat> diameter than most anything that I had done in the past. Um, so my tiny bandsaw mill um, wasn't entirely up to the task, but I also have an Alaskan chainsaw mill. So I would usually make a pass with the chainsaw mill to uh, almost cut the, you know, fillet the thing in half uh, so that it was smaller pieces to handle, but also so that uh, my width of cut that I'm able to do on the bandsaw mill was actually effective. So um, it was a lot of handling. It was very heavy. Uh, and now that's behind us. And the date for the raising is on the calendar. It is on the calendar. Do we tell them what that day is? Or? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's on but the there's a deadline now. And so we often work well under a deadline. We're used to that. So we're going to plug away from this moment until that and, um, and be as ready as we can possibly be um, so that when we do have help here, there's, uh, it goes efficiently and we get as much out of that help as we possibly can. And that is construction department. Um, so one other thing that we've been working on, um, well, well, all the things that I've been doing, I'll, I'll say in, in a minute, but another thing that Nick has done is moved our solar panels. Do you yeah. want to explain that? Can you see them in the shot? Probably no, not. you can't. They're okay. too high up. Anyway, they're right up there on the, on the roof. This is not a new system at all. It's really, uh, we just moved our little tiny solar system from the yurt to the top of the house. We use very little power down at the yurt anymore. It runs our internet, which um, uh, does affect how you see us. Uh, but that's really all that we use power down there for. Uh, whereas up at the house, we want to charge devices, we want to charge drill batteries, we want to keep our uh, water pump running and our hot water heater going. So um, all of these things are greatly simplified by having a uh, renewable source that we don't have to handle and plug in and all of that business. So um, I guess I was kind of dragging my feet on doing that move, thinking that maybe we'll, we'll go big with solar. We'll get a big thing and but that's not happening. Um, well, and we decided it wasn't a priority for us. Right. I don't like to have a lot of uh, capacity to run electrical appliances because I generally don't like them. We do, we do want some comfort. Um, clearly, any human wants to be somewhat comfortable, but we've found that having minimal beeps and lights and, and um, just the, the feeling of electronics around us makes us a lot calmer and I think healthier. Absolutely, and it's expensive. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, the real roadblock was like, we can't like justify uh, that expense at the moment um, for, I mean, for a really marginal quality of life improvement, mm -hmm. honestly. Uh, we've been able to get by with very little power uh, thus far, and um, that's just the way we're going to go for now. And I think that we'll just incrementally, you know, uh, build upon what we have and fill the needs as they come up. But uh, for the moment, I feel like our needs are met. Right, which brings us to the, the other major project around here, which is a little bit fuzzy and everywhere and hard to describe, but... Uh, we've also been working very hard on landscaping. I planted 125 trees. They are not exotic grafted fruit trees. Um, it would cost a fortune to do that number of trees and you'd want to have a real orchard set up, which isn't necessarily one of our goals. These are, are very affordable trees from the forest nurseries. So I got some from the Missouri Forest Nursery and I got some from the Idaho Forest Nursery. Um, they're, so they're pretty affordable and they're trees that are um, in, intended to be able to survive in this environment. The ones from Idaho are grown right near here and they're native to this location. 
um, and they belong here. And once they're established, you can ignore them and they live. And they're, they're, it's not like keeping a, um, a pet. It's like instead. Right. But also, I mean, speaking to patients, I mean, she did plant 120 some trees and that, <laughs> right. But they're itty bitty. So it's not like, all right, next year we get some plums. Yay. They're going to, it takes a while. Um, but it's super affordable to do it that way and um, and easier to plant and just easier to manage in the beginning um, because they aren't quite so tender, right? And um, uh, But uh, that, that's the way we went and I think it's going to pay off big time because they're all over the place and they're going to do great work for us. I've said several times that this year is our year. To, to make some dreams into reality and that does seem to be um, validated day by day as things are just kind of rolling along. Um, there have been some really, really slow times here, but right now is definitely a rapid time where lots of things are just happening. You just look around and say, oh, there it is, this thing that I've had in my mind for so long. Now it's real. <laughs> yeah. And that definitely has been the case with the landscaping. My dad has been involved. Um, my dad lives about 45 minutes away and he enjoys landscaping and is an excellent gardener. Um, so he's been involved. It, his, uh, his physical condition causes him to not be very comfortable going down to the big gardens. Um, he likes to work right around the house so he doesn't have to make that hill over and over again. Um, but he's been doing some great work right around our house and it's been fun to work with him on that. And I think that... <laughs> We're getting hammered by the sun now. Oh, the sun just came out. So I have, I've missed doing YouTube videos and I am coming back to it. This is kind of our soft re-entry. It's good to reconnect and we'll be doing more over the course of the spring and the summer. But today, wish us a happy five years on the off-grid homestead as we're celebrating here. Maybe you should make a cake. Another cake? <laughs> Never too many cakes. There's no such thing as too many cakes, especially Nick Frosted cakes. All right. All right, well, thanks for hanging out with us, everybody. Have a great day. See ya. Get the little house.